Hello everyone, welcome back to another video at Round 3 Design. Today I have an ups and downs card for the Lawn Fawn Challenge number 72. This is inspired by a book, movie, or song. And I'm going to start with Oh Gnome and those two little gnomes. This is Gnome Sweet Gnome, but I don't end up using it. This is Gleeful Gardens, Very Sweet, Very Happy Holidays, Coaster Critters, and then I have Sweet Christmas and Christmas Dreams. They're, those are all stamp sets from Lawn Fawn. Then I have the Lawn Fawn Slide On Over Dies and the Lawn Fawn Grassy Hillside Stencil and the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil. These are two pieces of Bristol Smooth Paper. They're cut to four and a half by six inches. And I'm going to cut one down to a two size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I was going to start with my background here, but I changed my mind and started to start stamping instead. I'm starting with Coaster Critters and I'm taking the ticket booth. I'm going to use that one for sure. And then I'm going to build another, what looks like a ticket booth. Um, I'm actually going for wishing wells here because my inspiration is Jack and Jill. And I am going to uh, build with the two Christmas sets. I'm going to build my own uh, wishing well that could be the same one that's uh, that looks like the ticket booth from Coaster Critters so that it, it looks like it's been turned 90 degrees and you're seeing the other side of it. And here I'm, I've left all of this in. This was me masking more than I needed to. I was getting way too complicated. I should have just done the simple thing and masked it the one time, but I of course was making it more complicated. So I masked as best as I could and then I got that arch that I did not want. So I got smart about it and stamped the, the arch one more time on the a post it and cut it out so that it was about an eighth of an inch around each side. And then I laid that over the stamp when I stamped and now you can see it's masked perfectly so there's no curvature there and I can fill it in when I need to. And now I'm taking the peppermint stick from Sweet Christmas and I'm stamping some supports for the roof. And the roof is going to be from the gingerbread house from Sweet Christmas as well. And the the scallops on the roof will overlap the supports, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to fill that in with white opaque pen liner. Now I'm taking my Sharpie pen and I am filling in the lines that would make this a complete well. And they're not straight, they're not perfect, but they work really well because something like this that you would find in the middle of nowhere would be, it would not be perfect, it would not be exact. So this fits the character very well. I've taken the pail of fish from the Very Happy Holidays stamp set and the two gnomes that I'm going to use from Oh Gnome and stamp those as well. And now I've zoomed in so you can see the coloring. I'm using uh, my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I go to these a lot because they are so fast. It is the, literally the fastest coloring for me so I, I use them a lot as a crutch to not <laughs> take more time than I need to. So I'm using, uh, for the wooden parts, I'm using the color deep brown. And for the uh, cement or rock parts, I'm using uh, four different grays. Those are natural gray, dark gray, mid gray, and gray brown. And here I am just filling in the scallops with the Jelly Roll uh, white pen from Sakura. And this is a size 10. You don't need a size 10, but I was it's just a larger size, so it goes faster. And I'm doing any touch-ups with my uh, Sharpie Black pen. And I'm going to color the smaller Wishing Well the exact same colors, but it doesn't have any markings on it, so I'm just filling in some dots and making it look like it from a distance that it would be stacked like that way, the same way. And again, I filled in the scallops with white. And then for the pail uh, of fish, what won't be fish later, um, is gray-brown. And then I started coloring the gnomes. For the girl gnome, her hair is the color brown, which is a misnomer. It, it's very red, it looks very mahogany. And for his beard, um, I've colored that with mid-brown. And when I've chosen my colors today, I did so for a reason. Most of the colors will be muted um, neutral colors, but for the gnomes, I wanted them to be the focal point, so I've used brighter colors on them. And the color for their clothes and hats are both the same. I'm using green and blue. 
and I'm just putting the color in the edges where the shadows would be and then I just blend it out with my water brush pen. Again, I'm taking my white pen and adding white to the whites, mainly because this paper is not pure white. So here I have everything colored and it's dry and I am doing my reverse cuts. So any, I am going to fussy cut these out. So anytime I do that, I take my X-Acto knife or craft knife. It doesn't matter which brand you have, they all work the same. And I'm doing any cuts that would be backward for me. So because I am right-handed, those are all the cuts that are on the right from the corner. And in order to make it easier to, and not have any stress on the inside of these images, because they are going to be open, I have cut an X with my X-Acto knife too, so that it makes it really easy to cut. And then I'm just going to fussy cut away. Um, as I go around all of my edges, I'm trying to um, make them curved because they're not 90 degree angles on any of the corners here. At this point, I was not sure what scale I was going with on the front, so I was really glad to have these two that worked out. The ticket booth really looks like a wishing well, and I was very thrilled to play with the other stamps and build my own. It was very fun. I'm interested in doing more of that later. So you see here for the bucket, the pail, I have cut the fish out, but I would like it to have the other curved edge to it. So I've just drawn an edge back in and filled it with the same color, the gray brown, but at a more saturated level. I didn't blend it out as much. And now I have a bucket that works perfectly. And as I'm cutting out the gnomes, you can see that I bend the paper back um, anywhere that there's already been a reverse cut um, that I need to get my scissors into. And that just makes it easier to get everything in that I need to. And I'll just finish cutting out this one guy. When I am done cut, fussy cutting all of these, I will uh, use my Memento Tuxedo Black Marker and go around all of my core edges so that the stamped outline looks like it's a solid piece and doesn't, you don't see the white behind it showing through. That just makes for a more finished die cut. And I'll go through the inner and the outer edges on these open images. And that'll do that. And we'll move on to the background. As you saw earlier, I'm going to take the piece that I cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, and I have taped my stencil to it from the back side. And I covered the entire upper part in a light layer of tumbled glass distress oxide ink. And then I took the cloudy stencil and I stenciled on some very light layers of salty ocean ink. My very favorite thing about these stencils is that they work as a stencil, but also as a mask. So here I can uh, mask off the sky and I'm not going to get any green in it to make my hills. So for my hills, I've already um, decided that one's going to go one direction, one's going to go the other. So I had that one flipped over backward. And now I'm just blending on uh, two colors. This is Mode Lawn is the lighter color and Lucky Clover is the darker color. And now I'm wetting a brush, another blending brush, and I'm making it just damp. And then I'm just blending over some areas to make some tufts of grass and it kind of makes it look like clumps on the hill. So here's my basic layout. I've got my wishing well. I've decided to put the smaller one on the front and this is going to be the first track that will have Jack and Jill rolling down the hill. So for the second track, I want it going the opposite direction and I cannot line that up from the front. So I'm actually holding this up to my studio light so that I can see where this will go. And I've cut both of those out. I'm using my Gemini machine, my Gemini electronic die cutting machine from Crafters Companion. And these are the My Favorite Things replenishments. They have a uh, slider dot discs and spin and slide discs. So the ones that are more pill shaped um, oval shaped. I'm not going to use those. Those are just for sliding. But today I'm going to use the spin and slide. And I have cut some scrap pieces of paper uh, with a punch. These are 5 eighths of an inch. And I've lay layered them together so that I can make a stiffer backing. These are This will make sure that they don't fall out as they're spinning and sliding down the hill. And I've glued those on and let, I'm going to let those dry while they dry. I'm going to pull out all of my accessory images. So anything that looks like it would be outside or in a garden um, that 
fits the scale. I'm looking for far away and close up so that you, um, you get some forced perspective here. I have pulled out two additional stamp sets. One is totally awesome and the other one is uh, Big Thanks, uh, which was done in collaboration with Hero Arts. And I've just pulled out anything that looks like grass or flowers. Um, I'm looking for size as well. I've got some smaller daisies and larger daisies. Again, to do the forced perspective, I'm gonna do the smaller images further away and the larger images closer. So it looks like you are at the bottom of the hill and the well is at the top of the hill. And so I'm just, I'm going to use every inch of this scrap piece of paper that was the other side of my masking issue. And then I'm going to color these again with muted colors so that they don't take away from the brightness of my gnomes. I still want those to remain the focal point. So for my dragonfly here, I am using Shadow Mauve or Mauve, depending on where you're at in the world. And I, for these sprigs, I, I thought they looked like thistles, so I'm coloring them like a thistle bud that hasn't quite bloomed yet. So I've stuck a little bit of light violet on the end there. And for the greens I'm using on the thistles, mid green and light green. And then for the tufts of grass, that is green. And for the greenery on the daisies, that is may green. And I've put some bright yellow um, on the inside of the daisies and blended that out. And then for the toadstool, I've used beige and mustard. And for the petals on the daisies, I've used warm gray too. And the snail is beige and pink flamingo. And then for the rocks, I'm using mid gray, mid gray on that. And then I'm going to pull out my brother's scan and cut, and I'm going to let it cut out all of these tiny images. And it, it doesn't do it perfectly, but it does a good enough job that I can just snip off any edges that are not correct. Uh, I have larger than average hands, so cutting tiny images is really tedious and not so fun for me. So I'm going to let the machine do it this time. Any of the edges that are not correct or perfect, I'll just snip off. It's really easy to do that. And then I use my tuxedo my Memento Tuxedo Black Marker to hide those edges. Okay, that was just a quick clip showing that I glued uh, the discs on the back of my gnomes so that I have the spin and slide discs as well as the uh, reinforced punch discs that I had glued together. So they're all one piece and I just popped them out and made sure that they worked perfectly. And here I'm lining up my background on my card base and I'm going to put those cut out slides um, in so that you don't see any white behind when they slide around. And now I am ready to assemble my scene. So I'm taking the daisies and toadstools and I've already decided where everything is going to go. I'm just using my Tombow Mono multi-glue in my fine line bottle to glue those on. And then I am have intentionally placed the smaller images toward the back and the larger images toward the front. Uh, with the exception of the thistles. Um, I don't know about where you guys are from, but where we are in the Rocky Mountain area, uh, we get thistles that are five feet tall. So for those to be that large back there by the well is very accurate for us. And then I'm st I've stuck the dragonfly in the sky and the little daisies back here by the wishing well. And again, I'm holding those down with my tweezers. I do have several pairs of these tweezers, so that's pretty easy for me to do. And then I was trying to decide where he would have dropped his pail at, so I stuck the yeah, the gnome in the bottom slide so that I could see where it would look like he had dropped it. And I've got both of them in there now, and they're sliding around perfectly. And I'll just add this well on the inside. So for my sentiment, I am going to use this one from Coaster Critters, and it says, Life has its ups and, or life is full of ups and downs. Let's roll with it together. So let's roll with it together will be on the inside. I am just line that up with my Misty Creative Corners and my Misty. And again, I'm stamping with Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And I here's the inside of the card. I'm just going to line that up again using that same L piece ruler from the Misty Creative Corners. And I'm just making sure that it's even 
and level. I don't like greetings when they're not level and that happens every time I try to eyeball it. So I'm just going to line it up perfectly. And now we're ready to put the larger well on the inside. So I just glued the little daisy on there so I don't have to worry about it moving. And there's that, the inside is done. Flipping it back over to the outside, I'm going to attach the front panel with 3M foam tape. This is the three quarter inch length or width and I'm just doubling it up um, already as it starts so that I don't have to cut double pieces every time. And I, you can see I'm moving my discs around and making sure that this foam tape doesn't get in the way of anything and making sure that it doesn't stop them from rolling or um, make it too wobbly. We, you want it to be pretty stiff so that the discs don't slide out anyway. So now I'm just uh, taking out the lining paper and attaching that to the front panel. And then I will attach the panel to the card. I have a little bit of schmutz there that I erased off and I forgot my dragonfly trail. Yay, it's all working. So I'm gonna leave little handles here um, on my larger pieces of foam tape so I can line it up. And I was having trouble eyeballing it, so I'm going to stick it in one of my stamping tools. This is the Tonic Travel stamping platform, which is not available anymore, um, but I could have used my Misty as well. It just wasn't the one I grabbed. And then I'll fold that in half and that is ready to go. It's all done and there they are going up and down. And that's it for this card. So thank you so much for coming to watch and liking, thumbs upping and sharing. And I'll see you next time. Bye.